Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with fresh strawberry tart. That's right, it's a scientific fact that every person is born with the ability to make a tart exactly like this. But unfortunately, not everyone's born with the ability to own a tart pan. So not only are we going to show you how to make this beautiful tart, we're going to show you how to do it using a freeform method that requires no special pan. And by the way, speaking of special, this could be the perfect thing to whip up on Mother's Day to make mom proud. Or at the very least, temporarily impressed. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with the first component, the crust. And what you see me placing down here on my well-floured surface is exactly one half of our butter crust pastry dough. And what we're going to do here is roll this out to just about an eighth of an inch thick. And as usual, we'll just be using enough flour to keep it from sticking. And while I do think our butter crust dough is a fine choice, really any other pie dough is going to work here. But anyway, we'll go ahead and roll that out, like I said, to about an eighth of an inch thick. And ideally, once we reach that thickness, we should hopefully have sort of a circle shape about 12 inches in diameter. But don't worry if it's not perfect. We're going to make lots of adjustments. And since we are doing a freeform tart, all those adjustments are going to be done on the sheet pan. So what we'll do once our dough's rolled out is use our rolling pin to transfer onto a sheet pan that we've lined with parchment paper. And we will also brush the outside a couple inches very, very lightly with water. And then what we'll do once that's set is take our fingers and kind of roll up the dough around the outside, around the outside, around the outside, to accomplish two things. First, to give this a little more of a uniformly round shape, but also to even out the amount of dough. So what I like to do is go around rolling up sort of the minimum amount to get it into a round shape. And then once that's been completed, it's very easy to see where we have too much dough and not enough. And what we'll do to remedy that situation is, yes, you guessed it. We're going to take dough from spots that have too much and move it to spots that don't have enough. And hopefully after just a few seconds of dough redistribution, our tart shells should be close to round, with hopefully a fairly even amount of dough all the way around the edge. And then what we'll do once we have that evened out as best we can is go around and sort of roll that edge over one more time, which is going to make our tart a little smaller, but we need enough dough to crimp, which is the next step. So we will roll out and then roll up our dough as shown, at which point we're going to want to flour our fingertips because it's time to crimp the edge, which contrary to popular belief is not hard. I know we've all heard the expression, crimping ain't easy, but if you flour your fingertips and use this method, it actually is. Because as hopefully you can see, all we're doing is taking the finger of one hand and pressing it between two fingers of the other. And let's go to an overhead view so you can get a little better look at this. So we're simply holding two fingers about an inch apart while we press with the other finger in between. And we will go all the way around forming what is a very, I think, professional looking crust. Take that people doing this much easier with tar pans. So that's looking pretty good. And then what we need to do before we bake this is dock it with a fork, which means exactly the same thing as prick it with a fork. It just sounds better. And what that's going to do is prevent that crust from bubbling up as it bakes. And that's kind of a big deal because we need to bake this crust almost all the way before adding our cheese mixture. So we'll go ahead and fork that dough as shown, at which point that's all set to transfer into the center of a 375 degree oven for about 20 to 25 minutes or until golden brown. And hopefully looking something like this. And no, that's not perfectly shaped, but that doesn't mean it's not perfect. All right, the great thing about a freeform tart is that no matter how it comes out, that's how it was supposed to come out. And then what we'll do at this point is let this cool for about 10 minutes while we make our cheese filling. And to start that, we will add some room temperature cream cheese to a bowl, or in my case, a French cream cheese called fromage blanc, which by the way, should be way drier than this. I'm not sure what happened to this cheese. I guess that's what I get for trying to buy artisan cheese from a guy with a man bun. But anyway, you just use regular cream cheese. And then we're also gonna add a couple tablespoons of creme fraiche or sour cream. We will also need to toss in one large egg yolk, which yes, had a tiny bit of white attached, but don't let that fool you, just the yolk. And then we will definitely need some sugar, of course, as well as a pinch of salt. And then let's finish up with a little bit of vanilla extract, the pure and the real. And then last but not least, we'll do a little bit of lemon zest. And that's it. We'll take a whisk and give that a mix. And as soon as all that's combined, the mixture is now ready to transfer into our pre-baked crust. And by the way, some of you might be concerned because you're hearing the words cheese and strawberries in the same video. But relax, all we did was make the same slightly sweetened mixture that's used in a cheese danish. And fair warning, because we're doing a tart and a freeform one at that, we're only going to be able to do a relatively thin layer of this mixture. Which is fine because that's how a cheese danish is. But I did want to mention because if you do want a thicker layer, all you need to do is double the ingredients and then do this in a standard deeper pie dish instead. 
But that's not what I was going for here. So we'll go ahead and carefully transfer that in. And once that's been accomplished, we can go ahead and pop that back in the center of our still heated to 375 degree oven for another 20 minutes or so, or until our cheese mixture is set, and more importantly, our crust is browned. And if everything's gone according to plan, it should look something like this, which does look a little lumpy, but don't worry, as this cools, it's all gonna level out. And then once our tart has been fully and successfully baked, we need to let it cool down completely before topping with the strawberries. And a little tip here, this is always gonna cool faster if we slide it off the pan right onto the table. So we'll let our tart cool completely before topping with tons of fresh strawberries. And while this can be done with whole berries or sliced berries, personally I think cutting them in half works the best. And we will start by placing those down on the outside first, pointy side out. And by the way, if your strawberries came in different sizes, which they always do, we'll use our smaller ones for the outside and then our larger ones as we work our way towards the center. So we'll start by going around like that, at which point we will place around some more halves, sort of leaning them up on the ones we've already placed like this. And we'll go around fitting in as many as we can. And we will simply continue that until we end up in the center with our surface covered with these gorgeous and hopefully very sweet strawberries. And then what we'll do once the surface has been covered with berries as shown, we'll go ahead and quarter a few strawberries. And we'll use those to fill in all those gaps between those first smaller ones we laid down. And then once that's set, we have one step left, which is my personal favorite step. And that would be applying a thick, shiny glaze. And what you see me generously brushing on here is an apricot glaze, which I will give you the recipe to on the block. Although I guess I could tell you now, since it's nothing more than warmed up apricot jam with a little splash of water in it, and we'll go ahead and generously brush that over, making sure every single strawberry is covered. And by the way, while apricot jam is very traditional for this type of operation, really any jam or jelly is gonna work including, of course, strawberry. So feel free to use any one you want. You are, after all, the Charlie of your sheen. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and glaze our strawberries, as well as I also like to do the crust, because why not? And that's it, our fresh strawberry tart is officially done and ready to transfer onto some kind of tart stand for pictures. And usually at this point, I'll say something like, it doesn't matter how beautiful this is, if it doesn't also taste amazing. Well, not this time. This is so gorgeous, nobody's gonna care what it tastes like. But having said that, let me go ahead and cut a piece so I can see how I did. And like I mentioned earlier, if you want a nice thick layer of that cheese mixture, you gotta use a pie pan. All right, my goal here is to present a beautiful fresh strawberry dessert and not a cheesecake garnished with strawberries. But anyway, just a beautiful combination between our crispy crust, our thin but delicious cheese Danish cheese mixture, and of course, the star of the show, our beautiful and hopefully very sweet strawberries. But anyway, that's it. My take on a free form, or if you prefer freestyle, strawberry tart. Whether you're gonna make this to impress mom on Mother's Day, or simply to impress anybody else on any other day, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.